This is the Biblical Unitarian Podcast. Welcome to the Biblical Unitarian Podcast, the podcast that aims to start conversations about the oneness and unity of God and about the humanity of Jesus. My name is Dustin Smith, and as always, I will be your host. This is episode 298, entitled, 10 Human Beings Who Said, I Am He. So this is going to be the final episode in our series that is covering the meaning of the phrase, I am he. Now you'll recall if you've been keeping up with these latest episodes that Yahweh said, I am he within the Hebrew Bible. And when he said the phrase, I am he, which in Hebrew is Anihu, it meant that he was the undisputed, only true God. He was a God without rival. And that was a very strong claim for Yahweh to make. However, we indicated that there was evidence that there were a few human beings who also said the phrase, I am he. And when these men said, I am he, they were not claiming to be Yahweh. They were simply making a casual self-identification rather than making a bold claim to be Yahweh himself. And in the last six episodes, we saw that Jesus used the phrase, I am he. And we saw this in all four of our New Testament Gospels. When Jesus said, I am he, he was saying it in the category of these human figures who were saying I am he in a way to casually identify themselves rather than to make a claim to be Yahweh, the only true God. So this week's episode will focus in on 10, count them, 10 human beings who said I am he. Some of these are recorded in Hebrew, some are recorded in Aramaic, and some are recorded in Greek. But what is clear is that not a single one of these human figures was making a claim to be Yahweh, as the context self-evidently is going to indicate. In this particular study, this episode is going to demonstrate that it was quite acceptable for human beings to say, I am he, in various strands of Judaism and early Christianity, without any concern that these speakers might be confused with making a claim to be Yahweh himself. So who are these 10 men who uttered the words, I am he, in a casual self-indicator? Well, let's find out on this week's episode of the Biblical Unitarian Podcast. Our first example is King David. We've seen this in an earlier episode, but it's good to remind our listeners. In 1 Chronicles 21, verse 17, David said to God, Is it not I... Who commanded to count the people. Indeed, I am he who has sinned and done very wickedly. That's First Chronicles 21, verse 17. And in Hebrew, David says, Anihu, which is the Hebrew phrase, I, he, the first person singular pronoun, and the third person singular pronoun, the verb to be is supplied in Hebrew. I am he, and this is the very same Hebrew phrase that Yahweh says in Deuteronomy and in Isaiah when Yahweh wants to make the claim that he is the only true God. But here, David is not claiming to be God. In fact, he is speaking to God. He is speaking to Yahweh. And David is saying, look, I am the guy who has sinned. It is me. I am he. Clearly, David is identifying himself in a casual manner. Our second example is the blind beggar from John chapter 9. So in John 9 verse 9, it says that others were saying that this is he, while still others were saying no, but he is like him. But the blind man kept saying, I am he. That's John chapter 9 verse 9. And in the Greek, we get the indication that he was saying this phrase, I am he, over and over and over again. It says in Greek, leyen oti ego imi. He was saying that I am he. So he was saying this over and over and over again, but he was identifying himself as the beggar that was once blind, but now he can see. 
Clearly, he was not claiming to be the only true God. Our third example is a surprise to some readers. It's actually the Apostle Peter. And in Acts chapter 10, it says that while Peter was reflecting on the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are looking for you, but get up, go downstairs, and accompany them without misgivings, for I have sent them myself. Peter went down to the men and said, Behold, I am he whom you are looking for. That's Acts chapter 10, verses 19 through 21. Peter here is saying, Ego me. He's saying, Behold, I am he. I am the person that you're looking for. Clearly, in the context, that is what Peter means. We know that these three men are looking for Peter. That's what the vision had indicated to Peter. And so he goes down and he identifies himself. But Peter is not claiming to be Yahweh. Our fourth example is King Herod, who lived in the first century BC. Now this account is recorded in the Babylonian Talmud tractate Baba Bathra, and the reference is Baba Bathra 4a. So in this account, King Herod disguises himself so that nobody would recognize him. And having done so, he tries to trick a particular rabbi whose name was Baba Ben Buddha. And Herod tries to trick this rabbi into cursing Herod, but the rabbi refuses to do so. And the rabbi in the conversation is continually citing scripture that one should not actually curse a king. So the rabbi appears to suspect Herod's true identity, even though Herod has disguised himself. And at the end of the conversation, Herod eventually reveals himself to the rabbi. And when he does so, he says, I am he. And he says it, at least according to this account, in Aramaic, which is Anna who, the first person singular pronoun and the third person singular pronoun in Aramaic. What does Herod mean when he says, I am he? He's indicating that I am the king that's being discussed in the context. I am the king whom you presume that I am trying to disguise myself from. Herod is not claiming it to be Yahweh. Our fifth example is a figure called Honi the Circle Drawer. Now, Honi the Circle Drawer was a famous Jew who lived in the second century BC. And in this account, which is recorded in the Midrash on the Psalms, uh, the technical term is Midrash Tehillim, 126 verse 1. We have Honi going to visit his own house of study after 70 years since his last visit. Now, it was rumored in Jewish legend that for this 70-year period, Honi was actually asleep. So upon visiting his house of study after all of his time, and clearly Honi is a very old man at this point, he hears other rabbis talking, and they say, this tradition is as clear to us as it was in the days of Honi the circle drawer, end quote. And at that point, Honi reveals himself to these rabbis by saying, I am he. But nobody believes him because they thought that he was asleep for the last 70 years. So Honi says, I am he. And it's recorded here in Aramaic, Anahu. And it's clear in the context that he is claiming to be the person that they're talking about. He is not claiming to be the only true God of Israel. Our sixth example comes from Simeon ben Yohai. And Simeon was a rabbi that lived in the second century CE. And there's this interesting account in Genesis Rabbah 35 verse 2 that talks about the sort of things that Simeon was saying in regard to the sort of importance that he felt that he had. So Rabbi Simeon ben Yohai said the following, quote, The world cannot endure if there are fewer than 30 men living who are as righteous as Abraham, our patriarch. If there are 30 in the world at present, I and my son are two of them. Now, if there are only 20, then I and my son are among them. If there are 10, I and my son are among them. If there are five, I and my son are among them. If there are two, I and my son are they. But if there is only one, 
I am he. In Genesis Rabbah, it is written in Aramaic. So when he says, I am he, it's in the Aramaic phrase, Ana who. Clearly, he is indicating, in his opinion, that if there's only one righteous person left in the world, it is actually he. He's not making a claim to be Yahweh. The context is he's making a claim to be one of the few righteous people that are left in the world at present. So that's Rabbi Simeon ben Yohai of the second century. Our seventh example is Samuel the Small. Samuel the Small was a disciple of Rabbi Gamaliel, and they lived in the first century CE. So Gamaliel made a statement, quote, call up seven qualified persons to the upper room so that they could interpret and discuss matters of the Jewish calendar. Now, when Gamaliel climbed up to the upper room, he counted and there were actually eight persons who were present. And so Gamaliel asked, who came up here without the proper authorization? He needs to leave. And Gamaliel's disciple, Samuel the Small, arose and said, I am he who came up without authorization. And Samuel explains that he did not come up to participate in the matters of the Jewish calendar, but rather to simply learn how the calendar is to be carried out according to the law of Moses. Now Gamaliel responded to Samuel the Small, and he said, Remain seated, my son. Every year is worthy to be interpreted by you. And Samuel the Small said in Hebrew, in this account, I am he, which in Hebrew is Anihu. And when he said it, we could see that Gamaliel was impressed by this statement, and he reaffirmed Samuel's place as his rightful disciple by calling him my son, and of course, he allowed him to participate. This is recorded in the Babylonian Tractate Sanhedrin 11a. And as I indicated, Samuel the Small was speaking in Hebrew. He said, Ani who? I am he. Clearly in the context, he is identifying himself as the eighth person who came up without authorization. He's not claiming to be Yahweh himself. That's our seventh example. Let's move on. Example number eight. This is the famous Rabbi Akiva who lived in the first century and in the second century. This particular example comes probably at the beginning of the second century CE. So Rabbi Akiva returns to the village of his father-in-law long after the father-in-law had made a vow that his daughter would not benefit from his estate after he found out that she was secretly betrothed to Rabbi Akiva, who at the time of the betrothal, was a simple shepherd man. Now, at the moment, Akiva, who was a highly respected rabbi at this particular point of his life, returned to the village where his father-in-law lived, who was now very old and advanced in his years. The father-in-law expresses to Akiva his regret for the vow that he had made regarding his daughter. And the father-in-law, however, does not know that this famous rabbi with whom he is speaking is actually that shepherd man that his daughter married. He doesn't recognize that that lowly shepherd man has now become this great rabbi, and he is now talking to him. He just thinks that he's talking to a famous rabbi. So the story goes that the father-in-law asks Rabbi Akiva to disavow the vow that he had made. And Akiva asks his father-in-law, if he would have made the vow to cut his daughter out of the inheritance if the man she was marrying was actually a great man. And the father-in-law responded by saying that if that was the case, he never would have made the vow in the first place. And it's at this part of the story that Akiba reveals his true identity to his father-in-law, and he does so by saying, I am he. And he says it in Aramaic, Anahu. And when the father-in-law hears Rabbi Akiba say, I am he, he falls to the ground by falling on his face. He kisses the feet of the rabbi, and he gives him half of his entire wealth. And that's in Babylonian tractate Ketuvot 63a. So here we have Rabbi Akiba 
identifying himself as the person being discussed in the conversation, which is clearly the man that married the father-in-law's daughter. And Rabbi Akiba is actually praised. He's actually the recipient of worship. And the father-in-law gives him half of his entire wealth. Now, we might look at an example like this and say, well, if this person said, I am he, which is something that God said, and the person responded with worship and the giving of gifts, that sounds like a pretty high praise. But clearly, Rabbi Akiba is a man. He's a human being. He's a member of the human race. And he's not anywhere claiming to be God or Yahweh. The subject of Yahweh, the only true God, is not even part of the conversation that's taking place. So he says, I am he, of course, in Aramaic. Rabbi Akiba is our eighth example. Let's move on to example number nine. We have Rava Bar Joseph Bar Hama. He actually lived in the fourth century CE, so we're kind of moving a little far, but his example is also recorded in the Babylonian Talmud, tractate Erubin 54a. So this particular example involves two guys named Joseph, and so it's important to kind of distinguish them for this story. We have Rava Bar Joseph Bar Hama, and we have Rabbi Joseph. And in this particular encounter, Rabbi Joseph is blind, and he had a grievance with Rava Bar Joseph Bar Hama. And if you're interested in looking this guy up in the Babylonian Talmud, he's just simply described as Rava for short. Now, knowing that there was a grievance between the two, Rava takes the opportunity to mix a cup of wine in order to give it to Rabbi Joseph, who couldn't mix his own wine because he's not able to see. He's blind. So when Rabbi Joseph tasted the wine, he said, quote, This mixture is just like the kind that Rava Bar Joseph Bar Hama makes. End quote. Then Rava replied to Rabbi Joseph and said, I am he. And they go on in their conversation, and they actually discuss a passage from the book of Numbers and its interpretation. You know, the sort of typical things that rabbis like to do. So, Rava reveals himself, and he says, I am he, because Rabbi Joseph couldn't see. He was blind. And when he says, I am he, he is speaking in Aramaic, on a who. So that's our ninth example of a human being who says, I am he, but clearly is not claiming to be the only true God of Israel. And the tenth example, I think, is the most important one, and that's Jesus the Messiah, the human being. Now we can look at any of the examples from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I just picked one at random. I just picked this one at Jesus' trial in Luke's gospel to kind of clearly indicate the sort of thing that Jesus was saying. So we can see that the people surrounding Jesus are saying, according to Luke 22, verse 70, Are you the Son of God, then? And Jesus said to them, I am he. That's Luke 22, verse 70. Jesus says, Egoimi, which answers their question, Are you the Son of God? And he says, I am he. What does that mean? It means, I am the Son of God. Not God, but the Son of God. He's answering the question that they are clearly asking. So there you have it. Ten human beings who said, I am he, in various languages, Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek, and not a single one of these persons who uttered the phrase, I am he, was claiming to be the only true God. And there's nothing in the context of what they said that could even come close to assuming that they were making a divine claim. This indicates that human beings in Judaism could comfortably say the phrase, I am he, and not be accused of blasphemy or not be accused of making divine claims. To claim, I am he, is to simply make a casual self-reference based on the context. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. Join us next week as we move to a new set of topics. We're going to talk about the large and complex subject of Gnosticism. Yes, Gnosticism. So who were the Gnostics? What sort of crazy things did they believe? And when exactly did they live? Please look forward to our next episode where we only begin to scratch the surface of this deep and complex
set of questions. Now, if you enjoy our podcast, please consider supporting us as we aim to promote the sound truths about the oneness and unity of God and about the humanity of Jesus. If you can, please go to iTunes and rate and review our podcast. That helps others find the podcast who have not yet encountered it. It helps us to get our message out to other people, and it costs you nothing. It's absolutely for free. Please also subscribe on YouTube. That's also free. And share your favorite episodes with your friends. If you feel led to offer a financial donation, please check out the episode's description for a PayPal link. The Biblical Unitarian Podcast is produced and edited by Dustin Williams, and I am Dustin Smith, your host. Until next time, please take care.